Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, I went out to Las Vegas. Yeah, I don't gamble. <laughs> but we went out there for buffets and shows. This is the very first thing you see when you get there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of gambling going on. Anyway, um, the very first buffet we went to right after getting off of the plane, we went to the Wicked Spoon Buffet at the Cosmopolitan. Now, this buffet is the least expensive of the three that we went to, and uh, it was $45 plus tax. So, uh, was it good? Well, <laughs> it, it was better than any of the buffets we had at home, but I, I would say of the buffets that we went to visit, um, this was not the best of the three. Uh, overall, all three of us felt that it was uh, mediocre, probably. I, I would say that's probably, well, better than we, we have at home, like I said, but mediocre compared to the other buffets. So if this is the only thing you had to, to judge it by, I think you'd be perfectly happy with it. Um, the, the steamed crab legs were, were good, but um, uh, the rest of everything else was just uh, mediocre, I, I would say. It, it's, it's okay, but not the greatest. Um, it's okay. We we started out with this one, and we knew that we had two more coming that was, was going to be a little bit better. Um, I think had we ended with this one, we would have been sorely disappointed. We did uh, uh, have dinner with a couple of people, a couple of tables down from us when we were at our second buffet, and I saw them again at the third buffet, and I talked to them, and then they asked me, uh, you know, where we were going to go for, for future buffet, and I don't know if we were going to do more than three. But uh, they mentioned uh, the Wicked Spoon was one they were thinking of going to. And we t I told her, uh, yeah, I think you would be disappointed after the last two we just did. So I think I talked them out of it, <laughs> which is good. Uh, I, I think I'd rather have them go someplace that they would, uh, you know, feel better. So uh, these are some of the things that I ate. Obviously, crab legs. There's some, uh, some steaks and things that... You know that they have um, the, the the tacos were good but a little greasy this was a gyro that i had yeah again i just ate the meat i didn't eat the pita bread uh we stayed at the bellagio hotel as you can see they have quite a few swimming pools but it was cold at vegas the entire time we were there except for the final day we got to hang out in front of the pool but uh, we didn't go in it now this is what the bellagio is known for is these dancing uh waters with the lighting but I was told in the past, the lights used to be color. Everything was all white. And it's uh, still a good, uh, good thing to watch. So what about our second buffet? Well, we went to the Wynn Buffet at the Wynn Las Vegas Hotel. And this was much better. Yeah, this is what I really was expecting to see and, and, and taste. So $70.99 plus tax costs a little bit more money than the $45 from the other buffet. But I think it was well worth the price in comparison. Now, I mentioned it was three buffets we went to, and um, yeah, uh, this is not the uh, this is not the only buffet. Um, but between the the uh, ones that we went to, this was the middle buffet, in my opinion, of what we did. Plus, also the quality. Um, they had uh, steamed crab legs as well. Had a lot of that. I think I was crab legged out after these three buffets, and. Um, but the pizzas were good. Yeah, the pizzas were very good. Um, the one that you see right here, I, I was tempted to get, but it had truffles, and I'm not really very big on truffles. But um, I, I did try one of the pizzas because I figured I should. I tried to do the best that I could to avoid fillers. <laughs> and fillers would be anything that had bread in there. And, of course, I don't uh, have salad when I'm out there either. So uh, I tried my best to, to pick foods that uh, I didn't get often. All right. So, I mean, there's there's comfort foods that you can you can have. And, and you know, uh, uh, one thing one thing that my nephew did when he was at the Wicked Spoon, he, he had some uh, some angry uh, mac and cheese. We, we kind of laughed at that. We said, well, how angry was it? And he said, well, it had a little kick to it. But <laughs> so every time he tried some mac and cheese, we asked him whether it was angry or, or if it wasn't. <laughs> Um, anyway, the, uh, the um, buffet here at, at, uh, at uh, the Wind Buffet was there, uh, very good. The, a lot of people in the back uh, putting new things out. We got there just as they were getting ready to switch over from lunch to dinner menus. So you can see, you know, uh, the people are putting things out um, and uh, replenishing uh, things as, as needed. And... Um, the one thing we noticed with the with the first buffet, you know, we got there uh, at one o'clock. They closed at three. They didn't replenish things as as things were finishing up because they knew that they only had a couple hours left. But the interesting part is they still let people in, 
you know, even up to a half hour before they closed, they, they still let them in, but they just didn't replenish the food. So kind of felt bad for those people. Anyway, for, <laughs> for the Wicked Spoon, um, it, 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 it's a, it's a, I hate to say budget buffet because, you know, it's still $45, but in comparison to these, it, I guess it would be considered budget priced. Um, the Wind Buffet costs a little bit more, but well worth that extra money. I, I felt that the foods uh, were were more plentiful as far as the uh, selection was concerned, and quality of the food was better as well. Now, I didn't take note of what everything was. Um, the The buffets were f rather busy, and I didn't want to be the guy that was in line, you know, recording everything, going very slowly, and and uh, you know, holding up the line. So I just kind of kind of moved along quickly. So. What I felt the best thing for me to do is move fast and then use slow motion <laughs> in my video so that you can at least see some of the things that, you know, were offered. So you can you can take your best guess what you think some of these things are called. And of course, they always have fancy names for everything. But uh, generally, you know, if you see something like green beans or asparagus or whatever, you know what it is. <laughs> What I did notice that uh, the buffets have, though, is individual um, uh, pre-selected amount of food on separate um, uh, plates or separate containers. Like as you see here, there's individual. So you're supposed to take that and put it on top of your plate. But the problem is, is that the plates aren't that large in the first place. And of course, when you put another plate on top of that, you, you limit the amount of space. So you have to keep going back and forth to the buffet to go pick things up because you can't pile on a lot of food on, on the plate because, uh, you know, here you can see you can pile on individually here, but, you know, some of the other things they've, they've put it on an, a, a separate serving plate. So now the carving stations were plentiful. They, they had, you know, uh, chickens, they had turkeys, they had, um, you know, uh, beef. So, um, yeah, it was a lot to go with. And, and the guys were very, um, um, uh, generous, I would say, when they cut the meat for you. Um, I know in, in the in the third buffet, we'll see a little bit later. I asked for some prime rib, and the guy just cut me a huge slice. I mean, more than I probably would even wanted. But uh, yeah, they they weren't stingy at all. Um, the rest of the other stuff here, as you see, is you know it, it takes a lot of space. But again, you don't take everything. So even though a buffet says it has X amount of um, selections uh, you're not going to grab everything my, my hope was to try as many different things that i didn't try before and even then i failed miserably <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't grab everything that you know that they had to offer um and as you start eating the things you know you start getting more full and then next thing you know you can't finish it so my my suggestion is if you want to do a buffet something like this um, at the win, uh, you you might need two days to do it if you wanted to try you know the, the a variety of things, but as with most buffets, I find that I tend to go back to the same things that I like best, and uh, I I know that watching All You Can Vegas. Um, <laughs> Um, Derek from All You Can Vegas said that, you know, he, he always eats uh, fried chicken and, and comfort foods and, and people criticize him for doing that. But, you know, he said something once that I always remembered. He says, you know, why do you want to go places and try things that maybe you may not like? He says, I just I just grab things that I like and he likes fried chicken. So he gets fried chicken all the time. So uh, <laughs> whether that is the most expensive thing out there or not, if you don't enjoy the most expensive stuff that's there, why why get it? So um, I, I grabbed things that, that I wanted to try, but also I knew it was stuff that I probably would have grabbed anyway. So, you know, there's a lot of Chinese type foods here. I, I tried, you know, uh, one of the pot stickers uh, just to see what it was like, uh, to, to see how they did it. But, you know, I didn't go overboard on the Chinese food because I can get Chinese food anytime I want, anywhere I want to get it. Same thing with sushi. Um, I did not get a lot of sushi. I'm not a very big sushi eater anyway. And I don't tend to eat raw fish, so I only eat the cooked fish. So that limits me as to what I can get. But um, yeah, I would try one, and I would one or two pieces. And I said, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not doing any more of it. Uh, but again, if you're a big sushi eater, you know you might grab more of that type of thing. But I don't think the buffets are really well known for being great sushi places anyway. So uh, you're not going to get highest quality of fish or anything like that at, at even these type of uh, buffets. So. But you know they had soups available, and they and they some of the places had 
uh, soups where you can customize it the way you want it. But again, I kind of see soup as a filler. You know, uh, drinking all that soup base uh, just fills up my stomach. I'm, I'm not going to have enough room for other things. So I tended to skip all this type of thing. Now, some of the other seafoods that you'll see uh, are typically on ice, like the shrimp and the mussels. They're on ice. And quite frankly, I'm not a big fan of seafood on ice. If it was steamed and fresh, I would I would take it. Like here, they have uh, crab legs here, but it's, again, it's on ice. Now, another section, they have the crab legs was, uh, was steamed crab legs. That's what I would prefer to get. So now... I'm walking across. I decided to let the camera continue to run so that you can see what the uh, the uh, buffet actually looks like, where the, the seating is, and also uh, to get to the other stations so you can see how how big and how far away the other stations are. So we're heading over towards the uh, the um, uh, the dessert section. Now, I will say that I felt that the wind buffet had the best desserts of all of them. Yeah. They had a lot of selection, and I thought that the, the offerings were very good as well. So I didn't see where it was initially because it's kind of hidden into a little section of its own. And so uh, so here we go in, into the sections. Now, they had some uh, sugar-free type uh, uh, desserts and um, um, what are the things that they have there? Uh, well, specialty desserts that if, if, if you're, you know, you're not a big sugar person or cannot have sugar, or um, or gluten uh, type of things. They had specific things for you in, in this section here. Um, and of course, they have um, gelato and ice cream. You know, uh, that was a very popular thing. You could always see people hanging around, you know, that. Um, there's also this crepe uh, station where the woman would uh, just uh, pour stuff on and create a crepe for you the way you would like it. Um, I've seen the other YouTubers do this and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. But again, I didn't want to wait behind the line and, and just waiting for it to be done. I, you know, we have a limited time. Uh, some of the buffets offer two hours. I believe this one was also two hours. But the third buffet that we went to um, offers an hour and a half. So you, you do have a limited time. And while I wanted to do a video about the buffets, uh, I wasn't going to sit and waste my time simply just doing video. I wanted to eat the food. <laughs> so I got my job done, got out of there, and started you know, eating the food. Now, an interesting thing that we did do is that we took turns going up for the buffet because you know I had all my camera gear and everything with me. So that's at the, uh, at the uh, table. So one person would watch the gear. The other person would go up and get their food. <laughs> so we just kind of went back and forth between the three of us uh, getting the food at the time that we were able to do so while the other person is uh, watching the equipment. So, yeah, overall, um, I think the, the whole Vegas experience was very good, but the only thing that I thought was uh, to my dislike was uh, all the smoke in the casinos. Now, we don't gamble, but you do have to walk through the casino to get the place to place. So uh, it was just so overwhelming with the quantity of smoke and... Uh, my my sister and uh, and nephew and I were among the very few people who had masks on. Now, whether you like wearing a mask or you don't, we do because we we feel that it's a safer thing for us to do. So, uh, we wore a mask everywhere we went. It's the longest amount of mask wearing I've ever had <laughs> since the pandemic started. But uh, yeah, it was nonstop. We we wore a mask everywhere. We wore it outside. We wore it inside. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't, even at the buffet, going up to the line, I was wearing my mask because, again, people are next to me, so I, I had the mask on. And, um, and, of course, when you're eating, you take it off, so you take your gamble at that point, <laughs> whether you're going to catch COVID or not. Uh, again, the, the desserts were very good here um, at the win, and uh, lots of cakes. I've noticed there was lots of cakes, cupcakes, things like that. Um I took, again, the things that I probably would have taken almost at any buffet if they had it. Uh, I, I took a, a scoop or two of uh, gelato. Um, I'm not, I haven't really had gelato in the past. It's really uh, just ice cream that I, I usually get. But, uh, you know, if they offer gelato, I, I took it. And, yeah, very creamy. I liked it. <laughs> so uh, I didn't go overboard with this either because uh, I am lactose intolerant. But, uh, you know, you take a little gamble here and there for that. I mean, you're in Vegas. Might as well take a gamble. But it was very good. So uh, I tried um, 
I tried mostly the things that I was familiar with. I, you know, I had get like mint chocolate chip or something like that. Not very adventurous, I would say, when when I was choosing that. But here's some of the things that I ate: you know, a very small slice of pizza, a little bit of dim sum, again the crab legs. Again, <laughs> we did a lot of crab legs. I'm gonna tell you that. Um, but again, uh, they had. Um, you know, uh, meats that were sliced for you. So this, I think this one was my sister's plate because I see some uh, scallops on there. I would have th taken that too if I'd seen it, but I didn't see it. So the third place we went to uh, for the third day was uh, Caesar's Palace. Now, we did get uh, some of this uh, cronuts. Have you ever heard of the cronuts? Well, my sister saw it. She said, we have to get it. I don't know what this was, $8.95, something like that. You know, for one little donut, she cut it into four pieces. I says, man, that's a very expensive donut. But it was good, okay? So our third buffet was the Bacchanal Buffet at the Caesars Palace. Now, I have to say something here. When we first got there, we were there early. Uh, I think our appointment time was 3.45. Um, and uh, we got there about 2.45 because we heard lines can get pretty long. And um, the woman who was in charge of the reservations for people who had reservations told us to come back at 3.30 and she would let us in for the 3.45 uh, 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 appointment time. Now, it, I'll tell you, 3.30 is when they open. So we were only 15 minutes after the opening. But I tell you, that 15 minutes made a huge difference because a lot more people came in at 3.45. But I did tell her, I says, I have nowhere to go. I don't plan to gamble. And <laughs> we're just doing buffets and shows. So my sister and, and um, nephew, uh, they wandered off somewhere, and uh, I, I hung around with her. She says, well, if you have nowhere to go, you can hang out with me. So for about an hour or so, we were just talking, and uh, we had a really good conversation. I found out that she was from Hawaii and that her family had moved there uh, to Vegas and that she, uh, she was kind of stuck in Vegas now because that's where her family moved to. So... Um, after the long talk, and I told her I was a YouTuber, and I, I said, you know, I do e-bikes, and she, she was interested in how that all worked, and, and uh, she was surprised that, you know, e-bikes were given to me for review. Um, she's, I asked her about, the, you know, the food reviewers, because you see a lot of food review uh, things going on YouTube, and she told me that, you know, it's, it's getting out of control. There's so many people trying to come in to do food reviews that uh, it was a little too much, and I told her that I was going to do one as well, but uh, a little bit differently, I wasn't going to focus solely on the food. I says, I'm here to eat it. I'm not here to really sit there and review it. So uh, after the long talk we had, uh, I guess she kind of took a liking to me. And she said, look, I'm going to move you up in the line a little bit here. <laughs> so she brought us in uh, at about 3.15. And she says, just stay here. And then, uh, you can't go in until at least 3.30 because that's when the buffet opens. So she basically pushed us up 15 minutes. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm telling you that 15 minutes made a huge difference because by 3.45, the line was so long, um, people were just scrambling all over trying to get to the seafood. <laughs> so I went back and I, I thanked her for, for uh, allowing us to go in just a few more minutes earlier. So, yeah, it made a big difference. So thank you to her. If you see her out there, if you go to the Bacchanal, uh, tell her Russ is right, says hello. <laughs> And uh, anyway, uh, going through the line here, um, the interesting thing was the, the most busiest part of the line was really the, the seafood. And that's towards the end of this thing as we're, we're going and walking through. So there's different stations. Um, you know, there's the Asian station. There's the pasta station. You know, whatever, whatever is done, the, the Mexican station, whatever they have. And I just kind of walked through it uh, before taking anything. Now, it was a lot of people in the way. <laughs> I did one video and I said, okay, I'm going to have to come back and, and shoot again because people were really kind of in the way. I couldn't get anything good shots. But after the, the, the big mad rush was done and we had eaten for a while, I went back and started shooting these things so that at least you have a chance to see uh, with, with not too many people in the way. But again, um, it was the best buffet if, if, I, if I had to redo it again, I would say I would spend two, maybe even three days at the Bacchanal Buffet and skip the others. <laughs> the, this definitely was the best buffet I had ever been at. Um, of the three that we went to, this is still the best buffet of the three. Uh, it's huge. I mean, their seating capacity is 600 people. 
So you can imagine how many people, you know, come. And, and like I said, if you don't have a re reservation, you could be waiting in a long line. Yeah, you, you might not get through that quickly. We, we were lucky to get in as quick as we did. Again, I, I was there an hour earlier than we needed to be, but, uh, you know, I wasn't technically in line. I was just sitting there, you know, talking to her. I was on my, my mobility scooter. It was a little too much walking for me to do, so I took my scooter with me. And, um, you know, I just sat there while she's standing there talking to people and doing the things that she needed to do. And then we would talk in between. So uh, the carving station was very good. They had two carving stations, uh, kind of duplicates of things so that you can move through the lines faster. I think it was this buffet. Maybe it was the other one. I'm not really sure. But uh, we did move through pretty quickly, um, even though there's a lot of people. It only backed up a little bit when you got to the seafood section. And... I kind of expected that because, you know, everyone wants seafood. But here's the thing that I would say about the seafood as we go through it. Um, everything was mostly on ice for the seafood. I, I personally don't like that that much. I I took the uh, the steamed crab legs again, but I was, you know, I was getting crab legged out. I had so much crab legs in the last three days that I felt that it was uh, more than I really wanted to do. So, uh, yeah, I skipped a lot of the seafood simply because I said, well, you know, it's not like I never had a shrimp before <laughs> or a mussel or something. They had Dungeness crab, but again, code, right? They had uh, lobster claws, but again, code. Um, Jonas crab leg things. I don't know if it was this buffet or the other one, but again, code. So here, here's the seafood line. You can see there's, uh, there's servers there. There's people. Uh, so... This portion of it was the only steamed crab legs that they had. And then there's a guy who gives it to you. And I didn't take that much because I've already had so much already from the other two buffets. I mean, a crab leg is a crab leg. And so, uh, but everything else, as you see here, okay, this gentleman's taking some of the, uh, the uh, seafood boil. So that's, that's warm. But as you round the corner here, everything else <laughs> is uh, cold. Yeah, everything's on ice, and I'm not a really big fan of having seafood on ice. So although there's a lot of people here, I, I didn't partake in, in literally any of this, um, which you would tend to think, yeah, it's too bad, you know. I did Okay, I, I take that back. I did take some of the, the Dungeness crab and, and things, but that, but other than that, I, I, I basically skipped most of this section. I said, it's not like I haven't had this stuff before. It, I mean, really, that stuff is just boiled anyways. It's nothing special. So, yeah, that was a little disappointment. I will tell you this, that while I was waiting in line the first time through, um, and, and this is like way early in, in, in the, the, the time, probably a little past 3.30ish, uh, the guy who was in front of me had piled up so much seafood, and of course, what did he do? He dropped it on the floor. Yeah, he dropped the entire plate and everything. His his first word was, oh, no. <laughs> I bet you it happens often. But again, you know, you don't want to be the guy that actually dropped the entire plate of seafood that you waited so long to get. And, of course, a lot of it, too. So, yeah. It's kind of a pity, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> it's part of the buffet experience, I guess. So yeah, I took photos of the various seafoods that were offered, although I didn't take them. Uh, you know, I had snails and everything here, but I, yeah, I did not take most of this. I, I, I tried one Dungeness crab, um, and um, that was about it. <laughs> I didn't do the rest of it. But uh, food-wise, I would say the quality was really, really good. The, uh, I will tell you this. Uh, here's some of the stuff that I ate. Do you see all that prime rib? I mean, <laughs> more than more than I should have had. Um, I will say this, that the the prime rib was really good. They had um, they had a brisket and it was exceptional. I was surprised how good it was. And as you know, I have several smokers uh, that I, I smoke myself. I could not have done anything as good as, as what they did. And so I don't know how they're able to do it so well. They had roast duck and, you know, um, uh, pork belly and everything like that from the Chinese section. I tried it just to see how good it was, and it was really good. It's just as good as any other place I've had in Chinatown. So we were guessing, do they uh, do they borrow from the uh, the uh, the chefs that are doing their Chinese restaurants in the hotel and then just bring the stuff in, or do they actually cook a, a new batch in the back of the Bacchanal buffet? We don't know, but uh, it was equally as good as any Chinese restaurant, so I was really happy with that. Anyways, that's all I had to, uh, to, to show you, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you go to the uh, 
to the buffets. Go ahead and check out the Bacchanal. I think that was the best. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys next time.